Welcome to the home of America's original March Madness. We are at Carver Arena, Peoria, Illinois, in the Madness in full bloom. And today, it's the quarterfinals in the 2000 Boys Class A Basketball Championship, our first quarterfinal game, the wooden shoes of Teutopolis against the Nashville Hornets. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Bennett with my partner, David Kaplan. Welcome once again to March Madness and the Elite Eight. To Topless and Nashville set to go at it in the first quarterfinal game and the winner of this game will go on to play the winner of the second quarterfinal game upcoming that one will match Bureau Valley against Prairie Central and two more quarterfinals to come later today but these two teams which meet in our first game cap have a lot of tournament experience Totopolis has been here before Nashville is here for the third time in four years right great experience in the tournament Dave however for Nashville they come in as a prohibitive underdog their own coach Darren Lee said we never dreamed we'd be here they were predicted fourth out of six teams in their own conference well each team has a prolific score for Totopolis it's all state performer Mitch Kester and for Nashville it's Robert Lee well, Mitch Kester can score inside, he can score outside. He gets some help from his teammates. Robert Lee is going to have to surpass those averages today if his club will spring, what Coach Lee says would be one of the greatest upsets in Class A history. Well, while Kester averages in double figures, he's got two teammates who do as well for T-Town. Now, for Nashville, Lee is their only double figure scorer. Right, Lee is their main go-to guy. He'll touch it every time in the front court. Kester gets his running mates involved. He can pass, he can score, and he can Please place in transit. Well, Totopolis, the highest ranked team still alive in this tournament, and the wooden shoes are for Nashville. Back productions in a moment. Carver Arena, Peoria, Illinois, in our first Class A quarterfinal game, the Nashville Hornets. They're warming up as they get set to take on the wooden shoes of Totopolis in this first Class A quarterfinal. Let's bring in the third member of our crew here at Carver Arena. When you think March Madness, you think Mitch Robinson. Mitch, how you doing? Just fine, Dave. I am a little mad and right now ready to rumble. Let's talk about Nashville. You guys touched on the fact that they didn't expect to be here, which plays well into their hands. They'll be driving the lane, trying to pick up fouls, and if you foul Nashville, you're in trouble. All five starters average over 70% from the free throw line. As far as Tutopolis is concerned, they feed off their coach, Ken Crawford. I spoke with him moments ago about being the favorite, the hunted. He just smiled and said, we like that. We're tournament tough. We're ready to play. I believe him. Dave? I do, too. They have certainly been here before. Totopolis coming in with a record of 31-1. and one. They have won 14 consecutive games, but Nashville coming off a big super sectional win over Massac County, coming in with a record of 24-9. and nine. And we're just about set to go here at Carver Arena today. The Nashville Hornets have won five in a row, 14 of their last 16 games. They won the Woodlawn Regional, the Pinckneyville Sectional, and the Carbondale Super Sectional to get here. Totopolis came out of the Charleston Super Sectional with a win over Oakville in their Super Sectional. And right now, we invite you to enjoy the National Anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars to the parallel.
Very nicely done by Allison as we get set for basketball here at Carver Arena today. The fans of the Nashville Hornets decked out here and ready for this quarterfinal game. We get set for the introductions and we'll turn things over to the public address announcer, Paul Herzog. For our first quarterfinal game, the non starters for the Tutopolis wooden shoes, a 6 4 junior, number 22, Ted Haney. A 5'11 junior, number 24, Aaron Niebrigge. A 6'1 senior, number 30, John Tipton. 6'2 junior, number 32, Jeff Probst. 5'11 senior, number 40, John Repking. 6'3 junior, number 42, Eric Blummer. And a 6'3 senior, number 52, Andy Meddy. Here are the non starters for the Hornets of Nashville. A 5'11 sophomore, number three, Drew Ibendale. A 5'11 freshman, number 10, Jason Fores. 5'8 freshman, number 12, Ryan Humphrey. A 6'1 sophomore, number 21, Devin Hurtling. A 6'1 junior, number 31, Brad Nabalski. A 6'1 junior, number 40, Tom Ogswala. And a 6'4 sophomore, number 44, Brock Rommelman. Now, here are the starting lineups for today's contest. At a forward for Tutopolis, a six-foot senior, number 20, Johnny King. At a forward for Nashville, a 6'2 senior, number 32, Robert Lee. The other forward for the Wooden Shoes, a 6'7 senior, number 34, Andrew Gabzinski. The other forward for the Hornets, six foot senior number 33, Jason Finke. At center, six two senior number 44, Todd Taylor. The center for the Hornets, a six three junior, 42, John Schmalley. The top of guard. A 5'11 senior, number 12, Mitch Custer. And a guard for Nashville, a six-foot sophomore, 24, Jason Gajewski. The other guard, a 5'10 senior, number 14, Nick Swingler. And the other guard for the Hornets, a 5'10 junior, number 30, Scott Threlkill. Assistant coach for Tutopolis, Rob Smith. Head coach, his 23rd season, 19 at Tutopolis, where he's 438 and 105, is Ken Crawford. Head coach for Nashville. Ken Crawford, 18 consecutive winning seasons as the head coach of the Wooden Shoes. In his 19th year, and his 23rd year as a head coach, approaching 500 career victories is Ken Crawford. And for Nashville, the head coach, Darren Lee, now in his ninth season, 209 victories at Nashville, 248 in his 11-year career. He has never had a losing season. He's had nine straight winning seasons at Nashville and eight 20 victory seasons. As he talks to his Nashville Hornets, and they get set for this first quarterfinal game here today. And the Wooden Shoes fans also very much in evidence. They were here two years ago. And Nashville was here two years ago. Our officials for today's first quarter final. John Fall from Palmer, Illinois. Kent Hammond from Springfield. And Dennis Held from Raymond. And there's our announcer, Paul Herzog, who will walk out for the start of this game. And we'll get going with the quarterfinals. Topolis 
31-1 and one coming in. Their only loss came back on the 18th of January at the hands of Mount Zion, 63-57. They've won 14 in a row since then. Very impressive. And, Dave, the interesting thing is Riverton, who will play tonight, their last loss also to Mount Zion. So Mount Zion, a Class AA school, was able to knock off these two Class A powerhouses. Well, ceremonial tip there with John Schmalley of Nashville and Andrew Gabzinski of Tetopolis coming out to join Mr. Herzog at center court. And we'll get the real thing going in just a few minutes. There you see the Hornets around Coach Lee. And what must be going through their minds right now, Cap, is you get set to play for a state championship or a chance to continue playing for one well for T-Town I mean they came in with great expectations they knew they were going to have a big time season 31 and 1 for Nashville they were predicted fourth in their conference out of six teams and they were 10 and 7 at one point now they go on a 14 to 2 run they're 24 and 9 and Darren Lee said never in my wildest dreams that I think this club could get back here and he characterizes this game he says if we are able to beat Tutopolis it will be one of the greatest upsets in tournament history in Illinois. Schmalley will jump center against Gobzinski, and here we go. The quarterfinals are underway. The tap controlled by Nashville. Lee had it, lost it, but Nashville saves it. Jason Gajewski with the ball. The bounce down low. And the ball will go over to Tutopolis. So the first turnover of the game goes in favor of the wooden shoes. There's Gabzinski. There's Mitch Custer. Custer on the baseline drive bounces to the opposite side. And it's 2-0 to Topolis. Todd Taylor with the basket. Tutopolis says they have three things they work on every day. Discipline, fundamentals, and conditioning. They believe as games wear on, they will be in better shape than their opponent. Here's Finky. To Gajewski. Now a long jumper good by John Schmalley. Schmalley, 6'3", junior. Averages about nine points a game. Real quick release. Did a nice job. He saw he had a quick open look. And he never hesitated. Zinski couldn't finish. Nashville the other way. Trail kill brings it up for Nashville. Big game for him in the super sectional. 19.7 boards. Nice give and go. But the rebound pulled down off the rim by Gubzinski. Tutopolis should dominate the boards today. That's one of their keys of this game. They've got to out-rebound Nashville. Off the glass, Nashville had it. It was off of the foot, and the ball will remain in Nashville's possession. Get some full co full court pressure here out of Tutopolis. Usually just of the man-to-man -man variety, different looks, really not much of a run and jump type team. There's Gajewski, as a sophomore. Rail kill. Kicks it outside, the three-point effort off the rim, no good. But it saved Lee. With another chance for Nashville. Traveling called. Jason Finke called for the travel, and Nashville turns it over. But Nashville has to take advantage of opportunities. When they get the ball in deep here, you've got to score it. There's some contact. The officials are going to let you play. They come up with the travel call, but you have got to score. You get it two, three feet from the basket. You've got to make those things good solid opportunities in addition Nashville has to be happy early couple of offensive rebounds and they are in this ball game at two to two you wanted the first two to three minutes Dave to have a really tight ball game so you play with confidence number 30 with the ball that's John Tipton who just checked into the game for Gobzinski Topolis coming back out with Johnny King 
King now. Bouncing outside and Nick Swingler. You hear Darren Lee working the officials. You got to call it at both ends. He wanted to travel. Out of the corner it goes to Custer. Tipton, Tipton a senior, 6-1. There's Custer, 15 feet away, missed it. A rebound, and then who's got it? Nashville ball, trail kill. Came up with the loose ball off the scramble. And on the drive, Schmalley. Nice little hesitation move, and it's 4-2. Good head and shoulder fake, and I see a big smile on Schmalley's face. He says to his teammates, let's go. They believed coming into this game they could win. No one else gave them a chance. They've got a good start here, almost four minutes in. Johnny King. There's Tipton looking for King in the corner. King will measure a three. Missed it. Weak side rebound. Custer missed again. And the rebound. Lee and then a foul call. It's a really, really good set there for Nashville. They defended fairly well. They clean the glass, they pick up the foul, and almost four minutes in, they are out rebounding to Topolis. Four minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Nashville Hornets leading the wooden shoes of Totopolis. Four to two, we'll be back. 4.20 to go in the first quarter. Nashville leads to Topolis. Four to two, and let's check our keys to the game. The Hyundai keys to victory. Cap, what you got? Well, it's very important on the battle of the boards for Nashville to hope to be in this game rebounding-wise. Early, they've done a great job. Tutopoulos wants a quick start. They want to really shatter Nashville's confidence, and you've got to play with poise down here. You've got to handle all the pressure. T-Town has all the expectation. Nashville, no pressure. No one thought they'd be here. Lee in heavy traffic, bouncing it outside. Jumper good by Gajewski. Jason Gajewski who's led this team in scoring a couple of times. And it's 6-2 Nashville. Totopoulos averages 71 points a game. They shoot 50% on the season. So far today, one of six. Nashville at 60%. Turnaround jumper in and out by Gobzinski. Nashville really dominating on the boards right now. And you know what the key is? They're forcing Tutopoulos to run their offense a lot longer than they like to. T-Town scores, as you said, over 70 a game. But watch how hard Nashville works man-to-man -man and then forces the shot to come. Really, they're in a turnaround situation. Not a great look for T-Town. Here's Lee. He spins. And a three-pointer around and in. Finky used all the rim on that one. Nashville's playing with confidence. They're pumping their fists. They're in this ball game. And coming in, as we said, everyone felt Tutopoulos was a prohibitive favorite. You don't want to let a team that maybe has some questionable confidence in early, and that's what they've done. There's the putback by John Tipton. And it's 9-4 to four Nashville. That was too top of this basketball. Crash the glass and get stick backs. At the other end, off balance shot. We have our first foul of the ball game. It's called on Mitch Custer. Cap T Town went five minutes without scoring before that put back by Tipton. One of our Hyundai keys to victory was quick start for Teton. You want to jump all over Nashville, and it really has gone completely in reverse. You saw number 24, Aaron Niebrigge, in for Teton. Both free throws good by Robert Lee, and it's 11 to 4. Good start for the Nashville Hornets. And this is something that a strength for 
Totopoulos has been to get ahead of their opponents and keep them down. Shot would not go for Johnny King, but the first Nashville foul of the ball game is called on Scott Brailkill. Good entry pass, good interior passing. They get the ball into the painted area. The contact comes. Almost had the three-point play. Real nice job. Wait for the contact. There's a rule called the principle of verticality. If you're a defender, put the arm straight up. If the man jumps into you, it's offense. It's a foul on the offense. But if you're going to lower the arms at all, you're going to get nailed every time, and that's what happened there. Johnny King, an 80% free throw shooter. Missed the first one. Makes the second. And it's 11 to 5. Both these teams, excellent free throw shooting teams. Traveling, John Schmalley came to a skidding stop, and Nashville turns it over. You never, ever want to pick up that dribble just across half court because the, the half court line and the sideline right there become defenders on you. Here's Tipton, had it poked away. Good. Nice job. White shirts trying to help out inside. You can't allow that pass to come in all day or you're going to have problems. There, though, they did a pretty good job at pinching down. Grail kill. Brings it up against Custer. And the drive, bouncing it. Need to get the ball in Lee's hands more. We approach the final minute of the first quarter. They're being pressured by Johnny King. That was a good no call. The Teeth Town coaches wanted a foul there. If you're going to get up and body a man defensively, you better be prepared for some contact. One minute to go in the quarter. Six point lead for the Hornets. Pressure on Lee. Trail kill. And there's the foul. Johnny King. Tutopoulos is trying to change the tempo of this game. They're out pressuring in the final minute, which is a good coaching decision. And there's your foul. Really didn't get a lot of contact, but when you reach, you're going to get called. Three team fouls now on Tutopoulos. Leaning in. And then the shooter, Lee, got hammered on the rebound attempt. They'll get Lee over the top. And Lee is called for the foul. There was contact. It was Lee's doing. Nashville just plays solid defense here. They're not going to be out pressure in the basketball to the degree Tutopoulos just did. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. And the wooden shoes holding for the final shot. Mitch Custer. back to the bench. Ten seconds, and here he goes. Jump pass to the corner. The three on the way, no good. Rebound, thrill kill. Sends it down the court. The first quarter has come to an end. And the Nashville Hornets have taken a six-point lead on the wooden shoes of Totopolis after one quarter of play in this first quarter final game. It's Nashville 11, Totopolis 5. This is a Fox Sports Net special report. Hi, I'm Gail Fisher in the Game Room Studios for the Chicago Blackhawks Special Report. Today, the Blackhawks sent Doug Gilmore and J.P. Dumont to the Buffalo Savers in exchange for 24-year-old left winger Michael Groshek. We will have more on this trade tonight in the Game Room at 5.30 and then tomorrow night prior to the Blackhawks-Panthers game. This is a Fox Sports Net Special Report.
The broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Fox Sports Net and Intersport Television by the Illinois High School Association. Any reproduction and rebroadcast without the expressed written consent of Fox Sports Net, Intersport TV, and the IHSA is strictly prohibited. Let's go quickly to Mitch Robinson. Thanks a lot, Dave. You know, in an effort to improve each and every year, the IHSA adds things. This year, it's with the referees' whistles. They are like the NBA ones, connected to the time clock. As soon as they blow it, it stops the clock. Also, another addition this year, the monitor in-house. It is hooked up to our broadcast. The IHSA brought it in so everyone can get a good look. Not sure if it's a great thing, because if I make mistakes, everyone knows about it. <laughs> to you guys. Yeah, but you never make mistakes, Mitch. We Thanks. don't have to worry about that. 11-5 Nashville leading Totopolis as we begin the second quarter, and Totopolis will have the basketball. The precision time system, I think, is what they call it. It's outstanding. There's a little box, like a beeper, on the back of each official. They blow the whistle. Boom, the clock automatically stops. Uh, our technology. Hustling up the shot, Kaczynski. Another rebound, Nashville. And the edge in rebounding through the first quarter, 6-5. to five. Shot rejected by Kaczynski Get it with out. authority. Get it out. Where did that land? Bloomington, I think. That one was a leather sandwich. Real good anticipation. Lee said, I'm taking it all the way to the basket. No chance. Reflected out of bounds. Still Nashville basketball, despite the efforts of Coach Crawford to help direct the ball the other way. That was fun to watch. <laughs> Ken Crawford, I got the call for you. Here's Thrill Kill. In the corner. No look shovel. Intercepted, loose on the floor. Reverse, what a shot by Robert Lee. Nice job. He went up, knew there was a defender there, used the rim to help shield the ball, and then banked it in. At the other end. Oscar tried to answer, could not. And Nashville brings it the other way. Nashville's playing with a lot of poise and a lot of confidence right now. 31, Brad Nedbalski, 6'1 junior, into the ball game for Nashville. Had the ball a moment ago. Here's Thrill Kill against Custer. Thrill Kill on the drive. The offensive foul called on Scott Rail Kill. Probably not the best decision to try and penetrate there. You have a defender. He's not a jet quick penetrator. The defender has plenty of time to step over. He's sitting there waiting. No doubt about it. Good call. Official right on top of him. The defender Johnny King taking the charge. And Petopoulos brings it the other way. Down 13-8. 13-5. Down by eight. Here's Custer. Kaczynski on the drive, off the glass. Andrew Gavzinski with his first points of the day and a chance for a three-point play here, Cap. Well, he's a bigger player than anyone else on the floor for Nashville. And there he just outmuscles everybody. He gets a little bit of elevation, arc on the ball, and he gets a soft shot to drop, three-point play opportunity. When we get a moment, we do need to talk about the knee injury that he went through missed a year and a half of basketball with what his coach called Star Trek surgery. It really hadn't been done on too many people, especially a high-level athlete. Off the glass, Robert Lee. Robert Lee's tough. Robert Lee is a fine, fine player. We've seen him with two big-time plays here early in the second quarter. Just two minutes gone in the quarter. 15-8 Nashville. guys can come back for basically two years off and play effectively. Good ball movement and finishing for Totopolis John Tipton. Good patience, real nice interior passing. Schmalley the thrill kill. Lee wants it. Nearly stolen away. And a foul called. Called on John Tifton. First on Tifton. Four team fouls now on 
to Topolos. Trail kill's gonna get a much needed break. He's gassed, he has played hard. He's been on the floor three or four times. Here's Lee, their leading scorer, their second leading rebounder, their leader in three-point field goals. Devin Kirkland, 6'1", sophomore, number 21, also in there now for Nashville. Molly in the high post, outside the lead. Lee spins, scoops it up, and scores! Real good hesitation move, Robert Lee. The defenders all start stopped and looked at him and thought he should throw it back out top. He ducked under and scored. Fade away jumper, no good by Gubzinski. And then it wouldn't go for Tipton, but a foul call. Foul called on Gajewski. Well, again, Tutopoulos, the better rebounding team. Here they get a second chance opportunity. Nobody blocks out the blue shirt. And Tipton, probably regretting he can't knock that one down. Had a pretty good look inside, but he'll get two free throw opportunities. John Tipton, a 72% free throw shooter. Got five points off the bench in this game. 17-11, six point lead for the Hornets. I'll be stunned if Robert Lee gets more than maybe a minute's rest today. Smalley being pressured by Gubzinski got rid of it. Turned and fired. Another chance for Nashville. Gajewski saved it. There's Robert Lee. The hurdling. Four minutes exactly remaining here in the second quarter. 17-11. The pull-up jumper from straight on. Good by Gajewski. Got his shoulders squared. Keaton comes right back in transition. And at the other end, he fouls Custer as he drove towards the basket. Getting some up-tempo play here. Tutopolis definitely trying to change the complexion of this game through their offense. 3.50 to go until halftime. The Nashville Hornets lead the Teutopolis Wooden Shoes by eight. Stay with us for quarterfinal game number two. After this one, Prairie Central against Bureau Valley. And then tonight on Fox Sports Net Plus, quarterfinal games three and four, Pleasant Plains against Kankakee Bishop McNamara at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, then Riverton against the defending champ Rock Falls at approximately 8.30. Those games will be on Fox Sports Net Plus. For the channel number in your area, call 877-655-PLUS. 3.50 to go until halftime. I'm Dave Bennett with David Kaplan and Mitch Robinson. Nashville leading 19-11 over to Topolis. And Totopoulos with the basketball. Newtown nearly lost it. Johnny King saved it in the corner. King averages about five assists a ball game. A gaudy number. Banked in by Gubzinski. Did he call it? That's the question. You know what? They all count the same way. He squared up and he got it to go down. Diagonal pass into the front court. Rail kill and Jason Finky sends it back. Now look how far out on the floor Nashville is having to start their offense here. Tutopoulos has really kicked up their intensity. Molly. Cut off on the baseline. To the opposite side. On deuce by Jason Finke. And it's 21-13. What do you do with open looks? And Finke buried one real nice job by Nashville. A couple dangerous passes. But they worked it around and they got an open look. Here's Custer spinning, shooting. And another rebound. Nashville. A 12 to 6 advantage now in rebounds. Trail kill and airborne. And a chance for a three point play. 
That, this is just a microcosm of what we've seen in the first half. Custer gets a really good look from 10 feet. Normally, he's going to make this shot. It doesn't go down. There's your rebound. Boom. Almost a steal. They don't get it done. And here comes trail kill. Everybody relaxes. Nobody picks up the guy on the drive. There's your block. There's your hoop, your harm. Three-point opportunity. And Totopoulos takes a timeout as Coach Crawford wanted to talk things over. Gobzinski ended up on the receiving end of that drive. You know, Andrew Gobzinski, we mentioned he missed a year and a half. Missed all of his sophomore season, part of his junior year. In fact, didn't even become a starter his junior year till the last three or four games. He had a part of his hip grafted into his knee. He had, as the coach called it, a dead spot in his knee. And he went in for three surgeries. And this young man has come back and is one heck of a player. But that tells you a lot about his makeup. He worked hard. He missed a year and a half. And now he's one of the best Class A players in this tournament. Really a tribute to a young man's work ethic. Stay with us. For halftime, Mitch Robinson will be in conversation with Greg Edwards of the Peoria Convention and Visitors Bureau. Kath and I will have highlights of the first half and statistics all coming up on our halftime report, which is two minutes and ten seconds away. Here's Custer back to Nick Swingler. Godzinski. Tough shot. It's, when you're not that tall as a defender, it's hard to block that shot. He gets good extension, turn around, a good quick release. We approach the final minute of the half in this quarterfinal game. In their super sectional win the other night, Tutopoulos led by nine at halftime. They're going to, it appears, He's facing a deficit of similar proportions here. Might have been a bump on that shot. Well, maybe not. Three-point basket for Tipton. First three of the ball game for Tutopoulos. Tipton with eight points off the bench. And a big shot, 24-18. And that gives the Wooden Shoes fans a little something to cheer about. Here it is again. Well, that's a real big swing there. You had a missed opportunity in the lane at the other end. There's an open look. Took him a little long. He's going to have to be a little quicker with his release. But he got it off, and he buried it. That's a huge basket because at 24-15, if Nashville, you hear Darren Lee in the background yelling, that's a foul down there. If, if you score inside, all of a sudden you got an 11-point lead. If you go in with a double-digit lead and you're a big underdog, you're playing with incredible confidence. You saw the field goal percentages. Certainly the better of it for Nashville to this point. A pass too far. Trail kill could not get to it. That's a tough pass to handle. That's really not trail kill's fault. Exactly one minute to go, second quarter. You have to know who you're throwing it to and what can they do with it if they catch it. Even if he makes the catch, he's the smallest man in the lineup. He's probably not going to be able to get a good look inside. Five turnovers now by the Hornets, just two by the wooden shoes. It's a top of this basketball with about 40 seconds to go. Here's Johnny King. King with just one point in the game. And how about Mitch Custer? A 20 point a game scorer, scoreless thus far. Gobzinski. A little trouble on the dribble, but he managed to get it outside to knee breaking. We approach the 20 second mark. And Custer gets it back from Tipton as we reach 10 seconds. Five, four, jump pass outside, two seconds, got it! Johnny King! And the first half comes to an end 
And what a way to give his team a little bit of momentum heading to the locker room at halftime. We've reached the end of the half here in this first quarter final game. And Totopoulos with the late flurry back within three of Nashville at the intermission. Welcome back. Halftime of the boys single A quarterfinal. Nashville with a three point lead over Totopoulos. I'm Mitch Robinson at the half joining you with Greg Edwards, the president of the Peoria Convention and Visitors Bureau. And Greg, thanks a lot for stopping by. Thank you, Mitch. Let's talk about Peoria. You guys have the tournament down here. A great venue, as you can see, packed house. How pleased are you to have everyone in the state focus on your uh, town these two weekends? We absolutely love it. We, uh, since year one, we've just been thrilled to death to host this tournament. Um, it's a very, very prestigious event, as you know, across the country. And what we've done to develop the excitement of March Madness by adding the March Madness experience, it's just been an incredible thing for our entire community. I touched on it coming in during the second quarter about the new monitor we have up here for this tournament. Can you talk about that? Because you look at it, that's a better picture than I get on my TV at home. That's right. Um, that's just another added thing we did. It's year five, as you know. It's the last year of our contract. We were trying to figure out other ways we can say, hey, we love you guys here. Um, so we added a, a TV video screen. Actually, SMG, which is the company that manages our Civic Center, did that. And uh, it's, it's been a great attraction, a great addition to the event. In addition, I don't know if you noticed, out front of the Civic Center, we renamed the, the street temporarily to IHSA Boulevard. We put street signs out for all the Elite Eight schools that are here this weekend with all their, their names on them. So we're just trying to make that extra impression that we, we really do love March Madness in Peoria. Well, we wish you luck in getting it back. We're having a great time here. And of course, I'll be here next weekend. So I look forward to hooking up with you again. Great. Thank you, Mitch. Thank I you very it. much, Thanks. Greg. Appreciate it. Stay with us. Halftime continues. First half highlights with Dave and Dave. It is 24-21 here on Fox Sports Net. We're at halftime of our first quarterfinal game here at Carver Arena in Peoria. It's 24-21 Nashville leading to Topolis. I'm Dave Ennett with David Kaplan. Two big threes by T-Town Cap in the closing moments of the first half enabling the wooden shoes to draw close. Well, they played very well towards the end. They kicked things up. Their defensive pressure was a little bit better. Uh, for Nashville, they had to start their offense so much farther from the basket. But Robert Lee has really stepped up, had a very good first half. They had a very legitimate chance to have an 11-point lead prior to a turnover in the lane and then the King bomb from the corner. Well, let's take a look at the first half highlights to Topolis and Nashville here early on. You'll see a block shot by Gubzinski of Totopoulos and then Lee going to work. Robert Lee with the reverse layup inside and then Gubzinski down the lane. He sees the contact coming, but he finds a way to get the ball up on the glass. And then here's the duck under move out of Robert Lee. This kid is a heck of a player. And then everybody goes to sleep. It's got Rail Kill takes it all the way to the basket, scores. Fouled, made the free throw for a three point play. John Tipton off the bench, three of three in the first half. And then there's the aforementioned Johnny King from way downtown, and it made it a 24-21 game. And that came with just two seconds to go in the half. Tipton, the leading scorer, but interestingly enough, Nashville starters have outscored the uh, T-Town starters 24-13. Tipton, though, with eight points off the bench for Totopolis. Lee with eight for Nashville. And at halftime, it's 24-21. The Hornets on top of the wooden shoes. Stay with us. Second half coming up. Halftime, Nashville leading to Topolis, 24-21. Let's go to Mitch Robinson. Thanks, Dave. Here with the coach and coach at halftime. You guys finished with a flurry. Looked pretty good. What do you talk to them about getting ready for the third? Well, at halftime, we talked about the fact that early in the ball game we came out and we felt we gambled on defense a little too much, and that caused them to get some, some good looks. And they're great shooters. And if you give them good looks and give them a five-on-four situation, that's going to cause problems. So we talked about playing defense with intensity and intelligence. And, and I think that's going to be a key to the second half. If we can do that, and uh, we feel that, that we've got to get a little bit more moving in the post and maybe get Mitch uh, Custer a little bit more involved in the offense. All right, good luck in the third quarter. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. Dave, over to you. All right, Mitch, thank you. Halftime statistics. Field goal percentage. Nashville a blazing 63%. 
but Teutopoulos with a couple of big three-pointers towards the end of the first half, and at halftime, as we get set for the third quarter, it's 24-21. The Hornets by three. We get set for third quarter action here in our first quarterfinal game. Nashville leading to Topolis, 24-21. The wooden shoes and their fans very much in evidence here in Carver Arena. A jam-packed crowd here. And there's the leading scorer for Totopoulos on the season, Mitch Custer. But Cap, kind of a rough first half for him. Mitch Custer, 0 of 5 from the floor. He did have one rebound, didn't score a point. Four assists, so he didn't slack off in the ball distribution department. But to me, the big key, Nashville, 12-7 advantage on the boards is a huge stat from the first half. If they keep it up, they will win this game. Nashville with the basketball as we start the third quarter. Trail kill. Skip pass, trying to one-hand it and failing to do so, Gajewski. Could not haul it in right in front of the Nashville bench. You can't make that pass. You cannot continually throw the ball across the court like that, or it's going to either be out of bounds or stolen gone the other way. Tutopoulos said that at the half they talked about their defense. Coach Crawford said, we want to defend with great intensity. That's a good start. They did a nice job forcing Nashville out on the floor. Nashville shooting well above their average, and Tutopoulos. Below theirs, Dobzinski missed it. Rebound put back up by Tipton. Johnny King, I think he took it away from Tipton, didn't he? I think he ripped it out of his own man's <laughs> hands. Otherwise, they'd have had a layup. And Nashville's lead brings it the other way. Dumps it, rail kill. Good discipline. That is excellent discipline. Nashville outscores its opponents by an average of about eight points a game. They out-rebound them by a couple. This is the kid you got to have the ball in his hands the majority of the second half. He's the best player on the floor right now. We got a double-double in the sectional against Columbia. 21 points, 12 rebounds. Plays with great poise, Dave. Real killer at that big three-point play in the first half. Lee can't get a good look. Give it back to Thrill Kill. Very patient. Custer tried to knock it away from Thrill Kill. Now the three, good by Gajewski. Huge shot. Great discipline offensively. They shorten the game that way, and then they bury a three. And at the other end, the first points of the ball game for Custer and it's 27 23 nice job by Tutopoulos they want to push the tempo as you said earlier they averaged 71 points per ball game there they got a quick scoring opportunity and a good look and they got their star going since can nearly poked it away from Schmally they get it to thrill kill it's blocked by Gubzinski Second block of the game, three-pointer, good again. Lee this time with a fadeaway three. Darren Lee screaming at his team, get back, because Tutopoulos is going to push the tempo and take it right to the basket. Dobzinski leans in, missed it. Lee the rebound. He hits the three at one end, gets the rebound at the other. Good things happen when the ball's in his hands. Schmoley, travel. Darren Lee is walking a dangerous tightrope on the sideline. The officials will let you say a little more because it's state tournament action, but not a lot more. He wanted a blocking foul, felt his man was pushed out of bounds. Darren Lee, who commented, he got our pro trip to state knowing that it could be the last time. How you many, never know. How many great coaches never get down? I, I always tell the story of Norm Goodman, who won 92 regular season games in a row at Leiden, had Grunwald and Dorr. Great player, never made it to the Elite Eight. And it goes. The jumper in and out by Schmally. And the foul. Out on 
Nick Swingler. Well, Tutopoulos doesn't do a very good job at blocking out here. There's the shot. Pretty good look. In and out. Doesn't go, but the white shirt is inside. You can't rely on your talents. And the Hornets have the lead and the ball with 4.28 to go in the third quarter. 30-23, Nashville. We're in quarterfinal game number one. Third quarter, 4.28 to go. Nashville leads to Topolis, 30 to 23. Three more games to go. Right after this one, it'll be Prairie Central against Bureau Valley here on Fox Sports Net. And then tonight on Fox Sports Net Plus, beginning at 6.30 Central Time, quarterfinal number three, Pleasant Plains against McNamara, and then Riverton against defending champ Rock Falls at about 8.30. Those games on Fox Sports Net Plus. Call 877-655-PLUS for the channel number in your area. Nashville with the basketball as we approach the halfway mark of this, the third quarter of play. What a great time of year. March Madness, high school, college. The weather's starting to turn. It's just phenomenal. And in this building, as the foul is called on Gabzinski. his second foul. Now there's the pass out top. Gubzinski going for the steal. A little bit of contact. <laughs> Real kill with the ball for Nashville. That's a lead. There's Lee. Nearly lost it. Got it back. Smalling. Railco Smalley just got poked in the eye. He's got the use of his right eye right now. Brailkill drives in off the glass, wouldn't go. He lost the contact. Smalley lost the contact, and now we will get a stoppage. He's actually he yelled to the officials, holding it in his hand. He's got the contact, but it was jarred out. I don't know if he caught it or it just got jarred loose, but he heads for the locker room. Checking in for the Hornets will be uh, Brad Nidbalski. What must it be like, Cap, for these two schools, which have a combined enrollment of about 1,000 between them? And in this building today, you've got approximately 11 times that number. Great crowd in here. Both communities are here in mass. And th that's where the experience of having been here before really helps you. You don't get intimidated. Buster to the baseline. A nice move by Gubzinski. Little finger roll. He's got nine points, and it's 30 25. Gajewski from straight on. Gubzinski the rebound, and a foul called on Nashville. Utapel is starting to assert themselves a little bit more here, starting to flex their muscle to get the ball inside, which is what they need to do. I know they want to play that up-tempo style. They want to push the ball down the floor, but they're bigger, they're stronger, they're a better rebounding team, although the numbers don't bear that out to this point. They have got to make this into an inside-oriented game. Then you get good looks from the perimeter. You saw Schmally return. Apparently with his contact intact and out went Finky for Nashville. And Totopoulos down by five. They trailed by three and a half times. Ending the first half on a run. Costa lost it out of bounds. This is an important trip for Nashville. The last couple times down, they've been stymied trying to get into their offensive flow. They're showing good discipline, but you don't want the ball in the deep freeze either. You want to be aggressive looking to try and score, and you'd like to expand that lead again. Gajewski. Back to lead. This team is scoring 28 out of 33 games. 
and I think it's easy to see why. Bouncing Gajewski, and Lee drawing all the attention. Gets Gajewski open for the easy lay-in. I don't think they get the ball in Lee's hands at the top of the key enough. This kid makes great things happen. He's unselfish. He can also finish. He can score from the perimeter. That was a beautifully set up play. Tailing. Goes to Gobzinski. Johnny King. Custer in heavy traffic off the glass. Custer scoreless at halftime. Four points here in the third, and it's a five point game. Now he poked it away from Thrill Kill, but Lee right there to save it. Jump pass deflected and caught by Gobzinski. Dangerous pass. You can't put that much air underneath the ball. A chance here for T Town to get within three points with just about a minute to go in the third quarter. Johnny King open for a three from straight on. He got it. Very nicely set up. Good, solid screen. Johnny King had time to make a sandwich. Loaded it up, buried a triple. He said, well, I got nobody guarding me right now. I'm going to fire that ball, and he nailed it. And a timeout is taken by Darren Lee with 35 seconds to go. Here in the third quarter, a two-point game in favor of the Nashville Hornets. Boy, the T-Town fans are rocking. They've got a great contingent here right behind the two top of the bench in that corner. Looking for the best coverage of high school athletic events? Look no further than Chicago Tribune's Preps Plus. Each week, Eric Collins gives you all the scores, highlights, and news from all the big IHSA events. Catch Preps Plus this Sunday morning at 11.30, only on Fox Sports Net. 35.2 seconds remaining, third quarter. It's a two-point game, 32-30. After the three-pointer, the big three-pointer, by Johnny King. I believe that's his second triple of the day. And his first one came as the first half came to an end. Now the third quarter winding down. Frail kill against Custer. Here's Lee. Threw a double team all the way down. Robert Lee. That's a defensive lapse on Tutopolis. You've got to take away his penetration. Did a great job to get that on the glass and spin it home. Now King will fire up three. Not this time, and then a foul. It will go over the other way. With 3.3, Nashville with a chance. It's coming your way, Cap. It sails into the stands, and that gives the ball back to Tatopoulos. It was never touched on the floor. Well, that that was looked like one of your golf shots. It was <laughs> yes. just a slice Boy, way right. right. And it goes, King of three. No good. In and out at the buzzer. And the third quarter has come to an end. For one of these teams, eight minutes remains. After three quarters in this state quarterfinal game, Nashville leads to Topolis, 34-30. We get set for the fourth quarter, our Taco Bell game summary. Field goal percentages, big edge to Nashville, rebounding the edge to Nashville. Gobzinski of Totopolis, nine points. Robert Lee of Nashville, 13 points. And those two blocks, one of them a resounding block by Gobzinski. Back in the first half of this game, and he picked up another in the third quarter. And here we go in the fourth. Dave Ennett, David Kaplan, Mitch Robinson from Carver Arena, quarterfinal game number one. Nashville held the advantage, rebounding in the third quarter as well, six to five. The 10 to nine scoring advantage for the Hornets in the quarter. There's Custer. All four of his points came in that stanza. Get 
a foul called. Boy, Darren Lee certainly likes to work the officials. Foul called on Schmalley. It was his first. Team fouls even at two. Neither team shot a free throw in the third quarter. And Cap, we talked about what a key free throws would be in this game. And nobody's really gotten nope. themselves to the line. That's why I think Tutablos needs to get this ball inside. They've got the size differential. A little physical, too. Molly and Gibzinski. There's the look. Defender flying out. Shot is short. Good call. There's the foul. Custer to inbound. Gobzinski. From the corner, Custer. Three-pointer. Mitch Custer. You have to know where he is at all times. He's an all-state performer, 20 points per game. You're not going to shut him down all night. You just hope to try and slow him down and make him work for his points. There, he got an open look, and he buried it. This is as close as this game has been. One point, drill kill, drives in, and draws the contact. There's Custer. All of his scoring has come in the second half, including that big three moments ago and frail kill. There for the Hornets. Here's Lee. Drives in and a blocking foul called on Gubzinski. That's a huge play. You get the ball to your stud. When you see your team's on the ropes, you find your main guy. Here comes Robert Lee. Dribble penetration, no question. Defender slides over. Hoop harm and a chance for three. 15 now in the game for Lee. A free throw, good. And just like that, it's a four point game. Turnaround jumper in and out by Gubzinski. And Gajewski with the rebound. This is a veteran to topple his team. Eight seniors, four juniors. They did not have a freshman or a sophomore. An open look for a three, no good. Missed by Finke. I almost would rather, as a coach, have Robert Lee take that shot pulling up in traffic than trying the three, which is obviously a much lower percentage shot, but it was an open look. It was there. Inside of six minutes now. Back in it goes. Gabzinski. And the foul called on Schmoley. Well, Schmally's trying to bang in there and do the best he can. He's just a junior. Gubzinski, 6'7", a senior, a little bit more physical, a little bit more physically mature. Off the inbounds play, Tipton. And it's a two-point game. Very nicely executed, got the screen. Tipton looked for the ball, and he quickly scored it. Bringing it up, Schmally, who now has three fouls. A year ago, Nashville was ranked number one. Got knocked out in the regional final by Breeze Central. Thought they would be here last year. Did not think so this year. That's the way the game works. We approach the five minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Saved by Schmalley. Very lucky there. Zinski pressuring.
the baseline. Off the glass. Good discipline out of Nashville. Took care of the basketball, and then Robert Lee, their main guy, finished it, and that's how quick Team Town scores. Nashville has got to, as soon as they score, take off for the other end and set up defensively. You John, can't relax at all. Johnny King answering at the other end to make it once again a two-point game. Inside of four minutes now. Just Robert Lee to Schmalley. 39-37, Nashville leading to Topolis. Very central against Bureau Valley coming up. Quarterfinal number two. Goes King. Lee back out with it to Thrill Kill. And Nashville is shortening this game. Three minutes exactly. You've got to look to score, though, at some point. With a two point lead only, you have to look to score. See if he can get something going back door or get your guy Robert Lee on penetration. The thing they've done well today, Cap, they've managed to find those opportunities. Railkill drove in. Sent it back out. Two and a half to go. Poked away by King. Out of bounds. Still Nashville ball. We have a timeout. 2.31 remaining. Albert Lee. Robert Lee coming at you. It's 39-37, Nashville. Two minutes, 31 seconds to go. Here in the fourth quarter, Nashville leading second rank to Topolis, 39-37. to There's Darren Lee, and there is Robert Lee. Our Pepsi player of the game, 18 points, 7 of 9 shooting. Five rebounds, a couple of assists, a steal, only one turnover, which as much as he's handled the ball is fairly impressive. Robert Lee is a fine player. He's a guy that defends, he passes, he scores, and he is very much in control. He's the general on the floor. Thank you. It's a big reason. Knew I'd go there. He's <laughs> really shooting 59%. And the ball will still belong to the Hornets. You can't put it in the deep freeze the entire rest of the way here. It's just too dangerous to do that. With a two-point lead, you still have to look to score. Trail kill. Buster trying to poke it away. Nearly did. Loose on the floor. And this time it goes to Tatopoulos. That's the dangers of not trying to look to score. Everybody gets complacent. They stand around. They're just hoping not to make the mistake. Good job by Custer to come up with the steal. Two point game, two minutes exactly. How's this for the first quarter final? This is great March Madness action. Going down to the wire. Johnny King, jump stop, off the glass, got it! And we are locked up with a minute 40. Now Nashville's got to restart their offense now. That's a difficult thing when you have the ball in the deep freeze for so long to come back out and get everyone psyched up, synced up, ready to go. 39-39, Robert Lee with the basketball. Kill. Lee down the lane, poked away from behind by Johnny King out of bounds with 106 to go in regulation. Ken Crawford, wonder how many times he's been in this situation in his long career. Rail kill catches up with it. 
final minute of the fourth quarter. A tie game. Schmollin. And the foul. Neither team shooting. Fourth on Gobzinski, fifth team foul with 51.2. In the backcourt, Robert Lee slowly walks it across. I think you would want the ball in his hands now, wouldn't you, Cap? Absolutely. Heavy traffic. He gave it wisely outside. Here's Thrill Kill. 30 seconds. Smaller. Be shocked to think he gets himself free on the perimeter off a lead penetration to get himself a look to win this thing. Inside of 20 seconds, Lee fouled by Johnny King. Well, that's it. Now the next one you shoot. Ken Crawford just said, hey, 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 no more fouls because that means you put them at the line. That was number six. 16.9 remaining. In the fourth quarter, tie game. Nashville and Zetopoulos. One of these teams will go on to the semifinals, and we may know in the next 10 seconds. Well, you let your man go one on one, and then you have Finky spotted up, possibly. There's Lee in traffic. Zetopoulos with an opportunity. 1.6, here it is. Here comes Robert Lee. There comes defensive help. That is classic textbook man-to-man -man help. You're not going to get a call there. You are not going to get a call unless you are absolutely mugged on the court. And that's where our brand new timing system comes into play because the official's whistle gives 1.6 seconds left. It's exact. You can't get any more exact. Gobzinski. Picked up the loose ball. If you're just tuning in, you'll see the little microphone almost and receiver above the whistle on the lanyard. The officials wear a beeper on their back. When they blow the whistle, that microphone slash receiver picks up the sound and it's controlling the clock. So that avoids having to be a timer, recognize you heard the whistle, then get your thumb to push the stop button on the clock. Amazing what technology Un does. Unbelievable. Let's reset it for you. Possession arrow, Nashville's way. Timeouts, three apiece. Nashville, a couple of fouls to give. 1.6 to go in regulation. So, nervous faces. 1.6, there's actually a little bit more than 1.6 because here's where the timer starts the clock. He's got to recognize the ball was touched, then start it, so you get a hair more. Taley will inbound the ball. Who are you looking for here to take the last It's going to be Custer. It's Custer from half court. Hit the iron. We will go to overtime in this first quarterfinal game. The wooden shoes of Tutopolis fight their way back. As you look at Custer launching this one at the buzzer, stay with us, overtime coming up from Peoria. We had for overtime here in this quarterfinal game to Topolis and Nashville tied at 39. Nashville was looking for a game-winning shot, but to Topolis stepped up on defense. Well, you watch all the blue shirts come over. There's a good solid screen by Schmally, but. You can't try and dribble through three guys, and there's your steal. And then Teton had a look at the end, but it was from darn near 45 feet off the rim by Custer. In overtime, in the sectional final, Teutopolis beat Newton 66 to 60. Nashville played an overtime game earlier this year against. Anna Jonesboro, and they won that game 72-69, but that was back in December. It's been a while since Nashville had a field goal. 
Robert Lee wants to penetrate. You can tell he wants to go to the basket. They played terrific defense on him in the fourth quarter. And now we're into overtime. Kajewski fell down and lost the ball. Numbers here. Gudzinski steps it. And Tutopoulos leads for the first time. Well, a big guy runs, you reward him. There, Robert Lee tries to do too much, and nobody talks. You've got to tell your man if a defender is racing up behind. Now, T-Town with a clear advantage. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Hornets. And three in a row. Thirteen in the game. Zemski with two minutes to go in overtime. Nearly stolen by Lee. I don't know if I'd go in the deep freeze if I was too topless. They have the size advantage. I'd probably look to go right inside. We saw this at the other end a few minutes ago, but now the shoe is on the other foot. The wooden shoe. Exactly. Minute and a half to go. Custer. Fouled by Gajewski. That's the fifth team foul now. Now when a big guy gets out and runs, you better reward him. He fills the lane. Here comes the unfortunate turnover. Now watch Gubzinski. There he comes. Boom! That is as high percentage as you're going to get. You find your big guy and you know no one can stop him. You're not going to get a charge underneath the basket. And there's the deuce. And you can hear the crowd reaction as the Harbor Arena fans see the replay just as you saw it. On the dunk by Gubzinski to put the Teutopolis wooden shoes ahead by two. And just a minute 23 to go. Nashville in the lead throughout. They led 11 to 5 after one quarter. Led by three at halftime. Led by four going to the fourth. Since halftime, Nashville still has shot a respectable, better than respectable, 55%. And Tetopoulos has been down around 40% throughout the game, 43% for the game, but Nashville has not been able to get much going on the offensive end. Now, the possession arrow favors Tetopoulos. Foul-wise, the next foul on Tetopoulos would send Nashville to the line. The next foul on Nashville, though, would not put Teton at the line, so Nashville's going to have to use up another couple of fouls. Here's Custer. At some point, Darren Lee's going to have to make the decision to foul. And there's the foul, Robert Lee. So. Darren Lee has a play card or a sheet of paper with all their plays and lineups. It's halfway sticking out of his pocket right now. It is as crumpled as anything you've ever seen. Ball loose on the floor. Who's got it? Lee scrambling for it with Swingler. It belongs to Tetopoulos. You mentioned a moment ago the possession arrow to T-Town. Here's the loose ball scramble. A lot of contact there. Good no call by the officials, and you get the jump. First down to Tetopoulos. Okay. Now T-Town will be shooting. 
The seventh foul puts Tatopoulos in the bonus. The foul called on Gajewski, his fourth, but the more important number at the moment. At the line, the free throw good by Johnny King, an 80% free throw shooter. This is the first free throw attempted by Tatopoulos since the first half. Got him both. Two possession game now. That was big. Now Nashville has to come down. They can't panic and take a three just to take one. Take the ball to the basket. Robert Lee. Trail kill. There's a three on the way. It's no good. Gajewski missed it. King has it. 40 seconds to go, and there's the foul. Lee fouls Custer. Three on Lee. And a timeout taken here by Nashville and Coach Darren Lee with 39.3 to go. Custer about to step to the free throw line, an 85% free throw shooter, and a chance to put this lead up to six points. It would still be a two possession game, but 39 seconds to go. <laughs> you, they're going to foul you, so you have to be really strong with the basketball. You get that ball. 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 You get And follow through. It's not over. Come on. Go, go. Go. Be strong with the ball, the message from Ken Crawford. Well, the funny thing was, he pounded his head twice on the floor, had this look of fire in his eyes, and one of his players said something, and he, he couldn't stop himself, and he burst out laughing. What's that do to a coach in a, a <laughs> moment of high drama? You see Bob Knight doing that? I think that was hilarious. But you know what? That takes all the pressure off. Oh, absolutely. You guys are tight. Custer, all his scoring has come since halftime. There you see the free throws. In and out. And the rebound, Lee. Lee. Ducks down and under. Babzinski lost it. Smalley got it. Timeout, Nashville. Wow, a lot of contact inside. Jabzinski just looks at the officials as I wasn't fouled. Let me tell you something, in state tournament play especially, the players are going to decide it unless it's a clear-cut foul. Now, let's see here. He just stumbled. It looked like he just stumbled down. There's the loose ball. Schmally puts it back in. It's a two-point game. Let's see if we can see the contact. That's a tough shot by Robert Lee. You need to get a better look than that. But the end result works. works. Out. You don't have to, with this much time, 25.8 is a ton of time. You don't have to force up a desperation shot like that. Let's go in the huddle and see if we can hear what Coach Lee has to say. for Nashville in almost eight minutes. Let's go quickly to Mitch Robinson. Mitch. Thanks a lot, guys. Listening in the Tatopoulos huddle, they say they have timeouts to use. Do not turn over. Coach Crawford said, hey, we're going to win this game. It's that simple. Don't worry about the last play. Back to you. T-Town with four timeouts left. Nashville with one. 
Metropolis a two point lead. And the ball, Gobzinski to trigger. Custer. Bodies flying everywhere. Custer still standing. Drives through traffic. Gobzinski finishing. Four point game. Ten seconds. Lee stumbles. Lost it. Ahead to Custer. Count the basket. And Tetopoulos is going on to the semifinals. Really good job by Tutopoulos. They knew Robert Lee was going to be the guy with the ball in his hands, so they ran their defenders at him. Here comes Robert Lee. Get a hand in, and the ball game is over. Custer with the exclamation mark. Here you'll see him coming right at you. Now it is still a two possession game. Custer missed at the free throw line moments ago. Not this time. It's a one shot foul. Three point play. Deep three pointer. No good. Tertopoulos is moving on to the semifinals. Ken Crawford and Darren Lee exchanging handshakes in the middle of the floor as the Wooden Shoes, ranked second in the state, improved their record to 32 and 1 in dramatic fashion. Overtime, they defeat the Nashville Hornets by a score of 48 to 41. And let's go to Mitch Robinson with the victorious coach. Thanks a lot, Dave. Coach, you talked to me coming out of the half. You wanted to work on that defense. You didn't want to gamble as much. Defense looked pretty good in the second half. The defense was except what was very good in the second half. We didn't gamble as much, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I got out coached today, and I won't make any excuses uh, about it. Uh, Darren Lee simply came in with a better game plan than we had. Uh, we weren't as prepared. That is not my kid's fault. That's my fault. We'll be ready tomorrow. Does that show the signs that you told me that your team is tournament tough? You do have the experience there that they can overcome that? Yes. Uh, the, the, these kids have made up for my coaching in, inadequacies all year long. And, and, and I'm not hot-dogging here. I'm telling you, I've made some mistakes this year, and these kids have pulled me out of every one of them. They're great kids. Now we're going to go in and try to, try to win a state championship. I was just going to say, don't beat yourself up too hard. you got a night to rest. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Dave, Dave, back to you. The Wooden Shoes are heading to the semifinals after defeating Nashville 48-41 in overtime. I don't think that shoe is coming off. We'll be back with more from Peoria coming up. There's your final in overtime. Welcome back to Carver Arena in Peoria. Our first quarter final game is in the books and Tetopolis is in the semifinals after beating Nashville 48 41 in overtime. Welcome back everybody. Dave Eddy with David Kaplan with you once again and a terrific start to this day. The uh, elite eight. What a way to start a cap an overtime game and a great comeback by Tetopolis. Well I thought it was very gracious of Coach Crawford to give the kudos to Darren Lee. Darren Lee knew coming in his club Nashville was going to be sorely outmanned size wise depth wise as we said in the open they were predicted Nashville to finish fourth out of six teams in their conference let alone get to the Elite Eight. I thought they played a marvelous game down the stretch a couple of key turnovers ball going in the deep freeze they were unable to get their offense reignited and in the end two top of the strength and size inside one out well Mitch Robinson is standing by with the guy who put T town ahead as it turned out to stay in this game let's go to Mitch thanks a lot Dave had to go in the locker room to get Andrew Godzinski out here and Andrew the slam that turned it around you got him ahead you guys stayed ahead for good tougher game than you expected oh much tougher game uh, we really wanted to come out and attack him early and uh, really put defense on him we didn't really want to gamble with our passes, but we felt we played real good man-to-man -man defense in their stall game. Now what do you do? You, do you stay here to watch to see who you might be taking on and do a little pre-scouting, or do the coaches get you out of here? Yeah, we're going to stay and watch the next game, and uh, hopefully we can pick up th some things upon uh, what the other team does. Do you like being the team everyone's hunting? you got the best record left in the tournament. Is that the place you like to be? 
Uh, some people think it is, some people think it doesn't, but right now we're just on a mission. We, we just want to go out and do the things we need to do to win ball games. Can you talk to me about the slam, hearing everyone here go crazy? Uh, it, as the play unfolded, how did it feel for you? We're showing it right up top on the big monitor again. How did that look? Uh, it was a great pass from Nick Swingler, you know. He couldn't have put it in a better place. Not bad to have a big screen like that around, huh? Not bad. <laughs> Congratulations, Andrew. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Nice job. Dave, Dave, back to you. Uh, not bad at all to be able to glance up there and take a look at that one. And really, Nashville shot the ball well all day, but uh, when they had to, Totopoulos made their shots. That one, of course, by Gubzinski on the end of the break. And over the uh, fourth quarter and the overtime, Cap, uh, T-Town kind of took over in this game, outscoring the uh, Hornets 18 to 7. As we look at the final stats in the game, the shooting percentages: 55% for Nashville, 45% for Jutopolis, and uh, assists and turnovers. The edge in both categories heavily to T-Town. Well, if you look at turnovers, the numbers skewed a bit for Nashville. They went into delay game fairly early, and when you force your guys under that type of extreme pressure in the Elite Eight with 12,000 people here, you're going to have some turnovers. Unfortunately for Nashville, they were unable to get their offense reignited, and the, in the end, it was Gabzinski inside, and Custer, who was scoreless at the half, played a very good second half, and to his credit, he never let his guard down. When his scoring wasn't there, he still found the open man at four assists at the half and did a great job. I know some coaches like to get their team back to the hotel, relax, get your rest. You got to come back and hopefully, well, you're going to be playing a couple of games tomorrow. Uh, but in this case, and, and certainly Coach Crawford's been through this before, he wants his team to stick around and uh, see their next opponent. You know, the other thing is these are 15, 16, and 17-year-olds. They're not going to lay around the hotel and relax. They want to be up and moving their young kids. So you keep them here. You say, this is the team that we're going to play. Let's see if we can figure out how we're going to handle it. Well, Totopolis moves on. An overtime victory, 48-41. Stay with us. Another quarterfinal game ahead. Bureau Valley and Prairie Central warming up. There's Totopolis. Welcome back. We're between quarterfinal games of the boys' single-A tournament here at Carver Arena. 48-41 to Topolis in overtime over Nashville. I'm Mitch Robinson joined now with the assistant executive director of the IH IHSA. I always mess up with you here, okay, Dave. Yeah. Dave Ganaway. Dave deals primarily with the officials, and we talked at the girls' tournament saying that you guys would like to have more, always a shortage of top officials. How do you plan to get them, and how do you plan to train them and get them ready for the action that we saw out here today? Yeah, as a matter of fact, let's just stop a second. That was great action in the first game, and I thought the officials in that first game just did an outstanding job, even clear to the very end. So it was a tremendous first game, and the officials, we do need help. And uh, right now we have uh, clinics that we provide our officials throughout the state. One good thing that we're going to do is we're going to start this summer with an officials conference right here in Peoria. July 14 and 15, which we're going to do seminars and clinics for all of our officials and all of our sports coming up uh, for next year. So we uh, would like to have as much help out there as possible. How can people contact you guys and uh, become a part of that clinic? All they have to do is contact us on our website, www.ihsa.org, or give, us, give our office a call. All right, Dave, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck, and uh, hopefully, as you say, if the, if the officials aren't a matter or we're not talked about, that means they did a great job. That's exactly right. That's what they want to hear. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you. Stay with us. We're between single-A quarterfinal games. We'll be right back on Fox Sports Net. Today, the